Welcome to the Bob Allen's HealthCast, episode number 502. It's not your imagination. You do lose muscle mass as you age. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men, that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. I don't know about women in particular, but men, at least the men I do know and that I've had conversations with, as we age, I have an anxiety about shrinking, uh, about losing our masculine presentation mm -hmm. and shriveling up and being tiny little old men. We've, uh, men my age have known men from previous ages mm -hmm. that that happened to almost universally. Who used to be Who used to be big men. and had yeah. great big muscles and then all of a sudden they're, they shrink in height and they get and a lot of them get bent over. They bent, their, their necks mm -hmm. are over. Their spines are over, and they walk with fragility, and they and they totter and weave as they try to walk. You follow them around the grocery store, and and they have to hold on to the basket to stay mm -hmm. upright, and then they drift. Mm -hmm. They drift without any awareness of anybody else anywhere. They just, I mean, I try to avoid <laughs> the grocery store muscles. on old people day. That's right. Well, but it, but it's all connected. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's what you've taught me. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing we're going to talk about today, though, is well, what about the muscles? Are we doomed to have that happen? as we age? Is there something that we can do about it? What makes it happen? Uh, so you, you hit 40, 45, 50, mm -hmm. and you start becoming aware that well, your shoulders aren't as thick, or your, your biceps aren't as big, mm -hmm. or you've got fat, you know, my biceps used to be up here, now they're down here, yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, talking about yourself? No, well, I used, <laughs> I used to. I, I used to be that no, way. I mean, that was a joke that I would yourself. make with my wife. I, you know, I could do this, and this was bigger now. Mm -hmm. But that's changed. It's a, I mean, it's that's a huge issue for men. It's part of their self-esteem. Not all women are proud of their muscular bodies or, or try to be muscular. I mean, they kind of ignore their muscles except for what it can do for them. Move them around and be able to lift things and carry their grandkids and that kind of thing. So, yeah. so oftentimes for women it's more of a um, I'm getting fat or they think they're getting fat because they're Fat is replacing their muscle, and so everything gets wiggly. And they, and, but, but that's not really what they're worried about. They're worried about not being able to lift things, not being able to walk, and not being able to go up and down stairs, yeah. carrying things, which is a big, is a, is a big problem, and it happens as we get older. But the reason it happens is fixable. Well, I think a bigger fear for me is the imbalance. I mm -hmm. mean, not so much can you still lift a heavy weight. I mean, I. I, I and men I know my mm -hmm. age get really frustrated when our bodies won't do what they used to easily do, mm -hmm. like lift a particular weight or something. Mm -hmm. Now I have to have my son help me and mm -hmm. carry something heavy. Or uh, I could do 100 push-ups and now I can do five. Yeah, th those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, you, you track those in your mind at any rate and you say, damn it, why is this happening? You Because know, I'm still me. Well, I'm not still me because something's changed inside. Mm -hmm. And what's changed inside is I've lost the production of testosterone. Mm -hmm. And without the testosterone, these are things that you've taught mm -hmm. me, without the testosterone, I can't build muscles. And so I can't do push-ups and lift weight as a way to uh, stabilize and increase my muscle mass because I don't have the foundation for it. It makes you so tired. Part of what testosterone does is it brings blood flow to your muscles. Uh -huh. It also is anabolic. It helps your muscles grow more than they decrease. Okay. So when you work out, and you don't have testosterone, you work out, you break down muscle, but you don't build it back afterwards. So that's a huge problem. That's, yeah. That is the negative part of working out with no testosterone is that you're, you're breaking down muscle like you always have, but you can't build it back. Well, so that it's a testosterone issue, but it's more than that. It is more than it, that. It's testosterone and growth hormone, but, but even then, it also affects your blood sugar, it affects your brain, your muscles, 
working out makes you think better. Mm -hmm. If your muscles are working, it makes you think better. So uh, many of these things, if you don't really appreciate or you don't need to have your muscles back or you never had a lot of muscle, then that may not bother you. But not being able to walk when you're 70 Absolutely. or not being able to lift things when you're 65 or not being able to think may bother you. And that does is tied to the muscles and physiologically. And, and there are just some other connections. Diet is a connection. Mm -hmm. Exercise is a mm -hmm. connection. Inactivity is a problem. Yeah. And the more we age, culturally in the United States, the more sedentary we tend to become. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I used to work six day weeks, 12, 15 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And even though I didn't work a physical labor job, I was up and working and I was in a kind of an isolated space, so I couldn't just go to the fridge and snack. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't keep candy bars in my desk mm -hmm. or things like that. Uh, but now that I'm home, I'm retired, and I sit around the house, I mean, my wife and I deliberately and consciously go for a five to six mile walk every day that we can, mm -hmm. summer and winter. I mean, if it's raining, obviously mm -hmm. we don't go. But other than that, we go, we walk that far every day mm -hmm. because I'm terrified of losing that capacity. I know mm -hmm. too many old people that can't walk mm -hmm. to the driveway or, or to the mailbox or to the grocery store. I, it just frightens me, Kay. It, it, it's, it's a... It's a universal change that will happen if you don't do anything about it. So part of it is giving yourself the testosterone back, because I really haven't seen anyone who maintains their muscle at the age of 70 who hasn't gotten testosterone back. I mean, right. they, they lose it, and, and or growth hormone back, because there's some people that just take growth hormone, which I don't advise. Yeah. But that does build muscle for a time, but it has other b negative side effects. But inactivity, not using your muscles, and t loss of testosterone are two big things that can keep you from being mobile as you get older. And that's one of the things that puts us in nursing homes. If we can't get around, I know my dad couldn't move around his own house and couldn't, yeah. couldn't go to the store and couldn't see my to mom drive was the and same couldn't she, walk. Her husband died and she lived alone on a, on a farm in, in a rural part of uh, Texas. And she retreated to a couch in the family room mm -hmm. and there was a path between the couch and the kitchen sink refrigerator mm -hmm. back to the couch and that was the only place that she could walk to I mean she lived like that for six or seven months and finally she said I need to go in a nursing home I mean mm -hmm. she was in a wheelchair I mean she couldn't walk and that's not really living well I mean it's, not, it's living. not the way it's I want being to live. alive but it's not really what we consider yeah. you know the generation that we grew up in is right. really living but some of the other problems that we have, and I had with my parents, was that they stopped eating protein, which is what feed, if protein feeds they your muscles. They lose the taste buds. And they can't taste it. It doesn't taste at, I mean, they it's lose. It's like eating straw. Yeah. yeah. They, they it's don't, just filler. They don't yeah. taste it, and they're yeah. not as hungry because they're not doing anything. Right. So they don't burn the calories, and well, they still have insulated the sweet with taste fat. buds. They have that. So they want to just eat sweets. And that's the last taste bud to go is the sweet. Yeah. So my, my mother-in-law lived to be... 96 but for the last seven to ten years she didn't really think right and she was in a an assisted living she lived yeah. with us before before she couldn't think right you know for seven years and then she was in assisted living for seven more years and she never ate anything besides uh dessert and coffee and hardly ever drank water which was awful i chatted with a friend of mine this week who's uh, 80 and he's been looking to move into an assisted living facility mm -hmm. for he and his wife because he had a cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. He's now cancer free, and so there's some relief there. But he was telling me how fortunate and lucky he thinks he is because he didn't get a placement in one of these facilities mm -hmm. because now the coronavirus and right. they're, they're isolated to their rooms. They bring meals to them. They can't go anywhere. They can't. I mean, and he's a guy that walks 10, 11 miles a day. I mean, he's mm -hmm. out doing it because mm -hmm. he's the same as I, he's afraid of losing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he really is conscious about what he eats. He makes himself eat properly. That's a whole new, that's a whole new problem. Yeah. But when you're in those facilities, I mean, I had three par three parents <laughs> who were yeah. in those over a period of 17 years and they had, they had activities, but none of the activities are active. Their activities where you, you sit. Play cards. You play go dominoes. somewhere and watch something, or you go yeah. somewhere well, you and see, they roll them down to, to a, a common room mm -hmm. and turn on some stupid TV show mm -hmm. and Velcro their head back to the wall so they can sit up. So it's it once you see that, and once people you love that you were once 
you know, people that you admired or were productive and yeah. you watch this and you go, oh, I don't ever want that. And then you think, what does it take not to have that? So she, I didn't have enough information about testosterone at the time that I could have helped Dan, but I, but I did help her with estrogen. That did help some of her brain power and yeah. keep some of her brain active. But, but honestly, you need, you need to eat right, you need to exercise, and you need testosterone for your muscle, for for your muscle, muscle mass. mass. Right. And to keep your muscle even growing or as it's broken down, growing, because it's, it's, um, it's a homeostasis, a, a balance between growth and breakdown. We talk about that all the time. So there's another element we haven't mentioned yet, and, and a causative factor for, for mm -hmm. decline and aging, and that's inflammation. Right. Does testosterone help? You fight inflammation. Yes, yes. To so we measure inflammation with a blood test uh -huh. called um, highly sensitive CRP, HSCRP, and we see that when, in general, when someone has a lot of inflammation before we put them on testosterone, that their inflammation drops after testosterone. So it decreases this immune problem mm -hmm. where they're attacking their own tissues, breaking down their own tissues, making fat. The more fat you have, the more inflammation you have, the more, the less you walk around, the less, less you exercise, the more inflammation you have, right. then you ache and then you don't want to move around. It's this kind of a, never cycle. ending cycle. Yeah. So, so that is one of the things that happens with low testosterone and with aging. So the damage of all these things is additive. Right. You lose the testosterone, then you lose the muscle mass, you even lose some of the muscle fibers. Mm -hmm. You lose uh, through inertia, you lose mm -hmm. the ability to walk around, uh, you the desire. You lose the motivation, the motivation. to go do it. That's what and testosterone is a good motivator. It gets people motivated to go do things yeah. and make them and do things so that they can do something good for themselves or do something social. They tend to, to sit. Yeah. without testosterone. So th that's an issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, being older makes you sit because you but think But it's a lot. an accumulative weight of loss mm -hmm. that then gets you to a fragile old age where mm -hmm. you break more easily and you die more readily. And so this is not in people's imagination because they, they look at the mirror and they go, well, you know, I still yeah. I still see muscle, kind of. Yeah. But, but it requires all of these things to make yourself have strength and make yourself continue to stand up and be healthy as you age. Muscles do a lot for us. They make our bones strong. They pull on our bones mm -hmm. so that we don't get osteoporosis. And on our backs, they hold our, our backs straight so that we, we don't get osteoporosis and look at the floor as we walk. So it's inevitable that this will happen to us as we age if we don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. But there are things that we can do mm -hmm. to reverse this process, mm -hmm. to slow this process down, mm -hmm to maintain our ability to, to move around and be strong even as we are older. Right, and, and what I wanna to say to women is testosterone is not just for men. Testosterone is one of our hormones. It's, and it's not just for sex drive. And it's not just for sex. It has to do with all of our bodies, yeah. our, our body composition and, and our health and our minds and ability to think and, and grow old, I'd say gracefully, but I wanna say in a healthy fashion. Mm -hmm. So, so that you may look a little older, your hair may gray, your, you know, you may have a little difference in your gait, but you're still healthy and you're still years older, but you look younger than you are. Yeah. Because nobody ever thinks that you're your age or I'm my age no. or, or or my husband's my age or Phyllis is is her age. So everybody <laughs> I, thinks I, we're I a told, lot younger. I told Phyllis this week we were walking and saw other old people mm -hmm. out walking. And I said, I wish there was some kind of like brand that people had to wear that showed their age. Because mm -hmm. I find myself checking, I'm like, does this guy look older than I am? Does that guy look older than I am? Does he look as old as I am? Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I get a lot of feedback that mm -hmm. says I don't look as old as right. I chronologically and you don't feel am. Well, I don't, uh, except when I get frustrated I can't do something when right. I discover it. So what are the things we need to do to avoid this? One is replace testosterone. Right. That's the first and that's foremost a, thing That's the first do. thing because nothing else works very well if you don't it works a little but it doesn't get you back to normal and then the second thing which frustrates me as well uh because i never did do it until you introduced me to mike jaudis at mm -hmm. the fitness edge mm -hmm. uh is resistance training mm -hmm. resistance exercise as opposed to cardio training yeah, so you always did cardio. We walk you all walk the time. and yeah. you did things that were aerobic right and aer aerobic exercise keeps your muscles steady but it doesn't grow them 
It, just, it isn't a growth. It's it keeps yeah. your heart good. It keeps your your body it slows down the healthy. deterioration, but it doesn't build right. anything and, back. Right, and it it helps maintain muscle, but it doesn't build it. Right. So that you can't get more muscle mm-hmm. by just doing that. So so you have to use weights and rubber bands and floor exercises and machines. Well, and, and actually, that's one of the things that I learned there was stretching exercises were as valuable or more valuable than using the Nautilus machines to, I mean, they helped. We, we did a we did a full package mm-hmm. of all those things, mm-hmm. but at least half or more of it was just floor and stretching exercises. Right, and that's partially because if you, if you get your muscles really tight, then you have to use the opposite muscle mm-hmm. to to get that muscle healthy, and that has to do with stretching Expansion, the muscle that you train. just yeah. that you just contracted. Okay. So a lot of that was building the muscle on the other side of, of the limb or on the other okay. side of the body. Mm-hmm. That also gives you balance. Yeah. Because you know, um, I'm all, they always put me on like one leg like a flamingo on top of a half. Bosu ball where I'm trying to balance and then handing me weights to do biceps yeah. and and I'm like and you have to balance on one leg yeah so it's that. not just biceps it was like everything yeah. in my body was trying to stay stay upright so yeah she she just wanted to see how many things I could do at once yeah you know but that helped because that was a challenge for my brain and that actually also kept me young I'm missing it because I haven't I haven't been able to work out at Fitness Edge for five weeks yeah. So instead, I had to find something instead. So instead, I'm every day I swim laps. I'm swimming more and more laps in my pool, and so that's a different kind of muscle. It's more of a long muscle, and it's not a it's not a a short muscle. So I'm seeing a difference in how clothes fit and things like that, just because it's a different muscle Shifting mass. Shifting it around, reshaping it. It's kind of making longer muscle, and it's aerobic and and resistance because the water is resistance. Right. So I'm I'm doing that instead because. John doesn't like to walk, and so it was something I can do, yeah. you know. Right. So, so that, and I can do by myself, and not go to too much trouble except getting wet. Yeah. So you have to find something else if you can't do your usual exercise. When you go on trips, you can take rubber bands, and you can do biceps, and you can do lunges, and that kind of thing to to build up your muscle while you're gone. And even if they don't have a great gym, or you you don't have time to go to the gym, you can do it in between lectures or whatever when you're at a conference. So another thing that you suggest that people do is get on top of their nutrition. Yes. They have to have vitamin D mm-hmm. among all the other things mm-hmm. that they that they might take as well. And that, that you have specific recommendations to make depending on what mm-hmm. issues someone's struggling with. Right, right. We, we offer different groups of supplements for their problems. Okay. And then you recommend exposure to sun 20 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if you, you can't can get, get it. it. I mean, today it's raining. Yeah. So I'm not going to get out in the sun. And that's without minutes. sunglasses. Yeah, your, I mean, you, your not brain, always, but for 20 minutes a day at least without sunglasses. If and you, hopefully that's in the mornings. Yeah, you know, morning sun. So 20 minutes a day is enough to keep your brain going, keep your eyes healthy, and that's without sunglasses. And it also you need the vitamin D from the sun yeah. to actually penetrate your skin. So that's without that's without sunblock. Right. Then you can put your your sunglasses. Then you put your, your sunglasses, sunblock your sunblock on. Yeah, yeah. especially if you're uh, light skinned. And then curbing your appetite for sweets, even if that's your primary or dominant taste bud mm-hmm. anymore, making sure that you eat uh, fruits and mm-hmm. protein. Right, the and balance. fruits and vegetables and protein. And the protein, the fruits should solve your problem about having a sweet tooth. Hopefully, uh, not you. Good luck. Uh, me. <laughs> It's, and, well, no, it's a and it gives you response, a lot yeah. more. Yeah, it gives yeah. you a lot more nutrition. Yeah. And but the protein. I talked to somebody yesterday, and I kept saying, "So, what do you eat for protein?" She was complaining that she her even on testosterone, she wasn't growing muscles. And I, and I said, "So, what do you eat for protein?" Uh, well, um, I don't eat red meat. I don't eat pork. I don't eat you know. I don't eat chicken. I, I'm like, uh, you don't drink milk. What do you? she was taking a couple spoonfuls of um, of collagen. Which is an animal product, but she was taking that and and the and she was getting off sugars. So she was eating fruit and vegetables, but that's just not enough. So I was chatting with a new neighbor that <laughs> just muscles. recently moved in mm-hmm. next door, and now that we're quarantined, we're not we're, we're not being <laughs> social with each other. You're yelling he, over the fence. We were. He was out in the backyard with his dog. I was out in the backyard with my dog, and I was grilling some steaks on the grill. Mm-hmm. And he said, "I've been watching you for months grill." And he said, and, I, "And I'm jealous because my wife is vegetarian." And uh, <laughs> I said, 
as soon as we can get together, I'll have you over for something to eat. He's no good, would you? <laughs> <laughs> so he has to go out to get his, his I don't beef know. But, or meat or, or, or chicken? Yeah. But, I, you know, and she's young yeah. and, and healthy at this point. Mm -hmm. But as she gets old, that's going to be an issue if she doesn't eat protein. It is. I mean, you have to eat a lot of pea protein or some other vegetable protein to make up for not eating meat. Me, I mean, we're carnivores, sadly, you know, for, for people who are worried about yeah. animals. We're carnivores. That's how we were built, and that's what we need. We can't make all the but protein in our body. if we do these things that you are suggesting, mm -hmm. we get our testosterone back, we develop resistance training, we rebuild our muscles, we eat properly, we reduce inflammation through the benefit of all those things. Mm -hmm. Because if it's additive to the negative, mm -hmm. it's additive to the positive as right. well. Mm -hmm. So if we do these things, mm -hmm. then as we get older, we shouldn't shrivel up and shrink and be tiny old men. That's right. And Good. we should be healthier as we go, because you could be a buff 90-year-old, but have some other med medical problem. I don't so, want to be 90 and be but, Charles Atlas on the beach. I'm yeah. old enough to remember who he yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but that is basically the simple formula for staying young and why we lose our muscle and why we can, how we can gain it back. So I think it's important for you to know for yourself or for those people who are around you that you could help with this information. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.